What's up guys, George Music here, back with another video, and I'm giving you guys a full rundown of Neutron 3 elements. I'm going to be going over each element in this plugin suite. So, let's just first talk about the simple interface of this thing right here. Up at the top here, we have a little preset browser. We have a track, a track assistant, which I'll get to later in the video. We have a full undo history here, which is pretty interesting. One of my favorite features of this, we have a low latency mode for recording that you can trigger on here. you got a settings panel and you got a uh, help tab which will basically bring up a manual down here you got your bypass and you got basically your in input level and your output level which you can adjust with these little sliders right here so let's first start talking about the first element which is the EQ now the EQ is insanely smart it is a 12 band EQ and has a really powerful learn feature which I'll get to in a bit here but basically if I you know, select one of these bands here, you can adjust it, you can do low shelf, back and all have a little thing up on the screen that will show you guys which each one of these does. It's pretty interesting stuff. Here you got how much you're boosting or cutting. If you guys want to boost, you can actually just hold shift and your EQ won't go left or right. It will just stay going up or down. And you got your Q, which you can adjust by pulling these little things here. Or if you have a trackpad, you can scroll down on the trackpad and it will increase um, the Q right there. It also shows you the note. Now, as I said, you have 12 you know, different bands. That's the most you can have. Moving on here, we have the scale for the EQ. Now, the scale basically adjusts what frequency points you are seeing on the actual interface of the EQ itself. So if we can go to linear right here, which has um, you know an emphasis on the high end, you can see it's the same EQ. The EQ points didn't change at all, but you can see here how stretched out 10K is. It's showing us in detail the really, really high frequencies. So moving on here, we have something like melodic. A lot of shows what EQ points your brain perceives the most. Stuff like log here, which shows uh, more low frequency and low mid detail, which I believe is the default. And you just got some different versions of log here. And finally, you have something pretty interesting called the piano roll, which basically just shows you different points on the piano. Um, so you can see here we're at A, and it lines up with the piano roll right there. So moving on to the last feature of the EQ, we have the soft saturation. And this basically allows the EQ to behave more like an analog EQ, um, in the sense where when you boost a cut, it adds some saturation to the signal, and that kind of analog vibe, I guess you could say. Um, and also, if you don't know about these interfaces here, you can pop each module in and out up here like that. There's also this little button right here, which is the the preset button so we can load a preset like that. Here we have one of the more powerful features of the EQ and this is this learn section here. So if I play the audio for it right here, it will actually choose the EQ points that it thinks are best for um, this particular signal here. And I can just press learn um, and it will find the right EQ points. So you can also solo individual bands which is really helpful. So moving on to the compressor right here. Up here we have the different detection modes of the compressor. I honestly wouldn't really worry about these. Here we have this little display which allows us to kind of select what frequencies we want to process with the compressor. As you can see here, I, if I only want to compress the mids, I can basically cut out all the highs and the lows from the compressor using these two knobs here. I can also solo what's happening with this compressor here and pop it in and out. So. Let me play some audio for you guys right here. I don't know if you're going to be able to hear it because I'm on the new recording setup, but basically you can get an idea of what this compressor looks like and what it's doing. You got your typical compressor controls. You even got a side chain, which you can use right here. And obviously to insert the side chain, you need to go up here and it will be different for each doll. Finally, we have the vintage mode, which makes the compressor react like a vintage compressor. It's more colorful. Um, they even say more warm in the manual, so you can turn that on here. And it will actually give you a pumping effect if you guys know what that is. Moving on, we have the exciter. I'll make a pop-up on the screen that has an explanation for all these different modes here. Then we have a little XY pad here, which will allow us to pick from different types of excitement, and I'll leave another explanation. Moving on, we have a kind of saturation knob. This is how much drive is going to be affecting your signal. And then we have um, a little EQ shelf right here with, that can take out a lot of high end. Um, say you only want to affect the lows with your saturation, then you can just use this and all this stuff up here will not be affected. So moving on, finally we have the transient shaper right here, and I'll leave up on the screen a little explanation for what these little things do. Precise, balance, and loose. And then we have sharp, medium, and smooth here. And what those will do is this is for like really um, kind of fast audio. So if you say something like a clap, this is going to be really good. Medium will work for most audio. And we have something like smooth, which is really good for affecting the attack and sustain of um, a really smooth source. So say something like a tom 
could be used for smooth and as I said earlier a clap or a kick would be perfect for the sharp mode and you got your attack and sustain controls as you can see here obviously it does what it says it adds attack or sustain so Alright, so moving on, we have the track assistant here, which is what Isotope is kind of known for, these different AI things. So in this case, I have a kick drum, um, and I'm just going to leave it on percussion, and it will auto-detect what it is. And if I want to be really upfront in my face, um, Isotope will actually process the audio and will give me a result. So as you can see, Isotope has processed the audio, and I found the AI to work sometimes, although I, I feel like it can be a bit frustrating. If I were to use the AI, honestly, I would use it on percussion instruments. I think it's good for that. However, I would avoid it on vocals. It tends to not really get vocals that right. All right, so that's all for this tutorial on Neutron 3 Elements. Make sure to subscribe if you guys want more quick tutorials. As you guys know, this is free till September 2nd, so make sure you get, get that. Um, anyways, I'll see you guys later.